Hi, good evening. Okay, we're going to start by checking some, um, maybe the final exam. I don't know if you are there or you just connected. So I'm going to share a screen so that we can um, maybe check the answers for the final exam. Okay, so this is the first part of the final exam and it says, uh, read the meaning of the words below and select the correct words to match each definition. Number one, an automatic machine or container which is designed to release a specific amount of something. I think it is dispenser. Number two, a substance such as mud or dust. For me, it's dirt a point, someone to a specified position. Good evening. Good evening, Juan Ricardo. Mentira, no es así. What do you think the answer for number two? Él es un hombre violento. Okay, maybe designated. Number four. It says, read the following steps. Number the steps a waiter follows to take and serve Bien an order. Bien so one is take customer order. Confirm the order. Two. Uh, this is two. Do. And this one? Could be one. Hmm. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Andrea. Uh, number four is number three. Number three. Yes, and number five is number four. That's weird. It's like incomplete, right? Okay. <laughs> That's que son weird. Los, son los pasos del, del, del ejercicio anterior. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. I see, but the first part, it's like just, um, uh, this is the final exam. Did you already did it? Yes. Ah, okay, so I was just checking the, the words and the definitions and the last two is just two, two steps, right? That's like weird. But okay, so there you have the answers. In the part number two, it says match the words to their meaning, the way someone acts behavior okay the action or crime of a stealing theft theft okay the amount of money paid to an employee wage wage okay um and this is different instruction which is correct how is the proper way to complete the sentences more old older Older. Mm -hmm. Her illness mm. is more serious. More serious than the doctor expected. Okay, very good job. So all the answers are correct. Now let's see the part number three. Complete the sentence using will and the verb in parentheses. I'm sure you and just have a good time on the training. Okay. 
We'll have. Okay. We'll have three. Number two, sorry. Will be. Will be. Number three. Will do. Will do. Complete the sentence using will or the present progressive. Mm -hmm. I'm having. Mm -hmm. And will help. Will help. Okay, that is just adding most of them will and the verb as it is in parentheses. This is the only one different. Interesting. And number four, part number four, it says, how important are the following evaluation points? How would you write our quality of this training? Important. How effective were the handouts? Important. <laughs> I think we, it's like a deja vu. I think we did this already. <laughs> okay. It involves an employee following another employee, like shadow to learn all aspect of the job. This is especially suitable for new employees as part of their induction. Shadowing. Shadowing. Cheaper generic courses that staff will join employees for other business and the court someone is of these courses are designated to achieve or count towards a particular recognized qualification. Is of this shelf training course. Okay, number five, it involves a formal transmission of knowledge and social capital over a period of time with some face-to-face -face meaning. Use of email and telephone communication. It is essential to have a mentor. Mentoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have the answers here. And it says next. Do we have more exercises or we finish here? We finish. Oh, okay. So. Well, that is the final exam. It is nothing, nothing, nothing that you cannot do. It's pretty easy and kind of repetitive, right? So since we have done this before in the previous exercises, so um, yes, I think that you can do it. So let me see how many, oh, we're just 10 in the meeting. Okay, so I'm going to check attendance for the 10 that are here. So let's say present as you hear your names and then we're going to continue with the program. Oh, let's see. First day. Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you. Belen Batres. Carlos Mario. Carmen René. Delmi Guadalupe. Francisco Nehemías. Helen Dionelli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Helen. It is Joanna. It is Joanna. Jose Arnoldo. I'm here. Juan Ricardo. Present teacher. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Kenia Cecilia. Present teacher. Maricela del Carmen. Moises Alberto. I am here teacher. Okay. Noemi Albertina. Creo que Noemi escribió, pero solo I am Noemi, excuse me. Ah. En el chat, sí. 
Oh, okay. Okay, okay. No, I missed nothing today. Um, Rafael Antonio. Reina Margarita. Stephanie. Judy Araceli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Jose Rudy. Judy, ¿tuvo su 101 o le tocaba ahora? Aún no lo he tenido, dicho. Ah, bueno, sí puede quedarse ahora porque le tocaría a José Rudy, pero no está. Ok, eh, no hay problema. Okay. Ana Mercedes. Presentito. Ok, María Angélica. Imelda. Tampoco. Y Susana. Teacher, no me mencionó Rubén Campo. Teacher, bueno, good night. Sí, este, no no servía mi audio, arriba. no sé si me llamó. ¿Tu nombre, perdón? Demi Gómez. Okay. Rubén de Jesús, ahorita está, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok, y escuché. Denme, ya estaba, pero es que no, no. No le servía el audio. Ok, ahorita. Ah, gracias. Ok, Delmi, ya está. Ok, there we go. So, uh, as I told you before, uh, today we're going to start with the pending topic from yesterday. It's pronunciation, the simple past ED ending. So, let me share my screen. No, I think I opened the presentation, but it's not showing here. So give me one second. Um, no. Four. Okay, we have a video that uh, we can watch here. Okay. And this is, uh, in this video, you will see what is the explanation for the three ED ending. So, is this one that you have here. So there we have the link. Okay, and you can, um, I don't know if you can do it alone or let me stop sharing and I'm going to play it here in the main section. One second, so we can watch it together. And I'm not going to be creating the breakout room since we are few people here. Yes, I can play it here. Okay. Let me share the audio because I think that you cannot hear. No audio teacher. The I OEC. ending of simple past verbs has three different sounds. Let's listen and practice. These verbs end in t, worked, watched. These verbs end in d, cleaned, stayed. These verbs end in id, invited, visited. In order to understand when we'll have a t, d, or id sound, we need to understand a couple of concepts. Voiceless and voice sound. So let me explain that. I would like for you to pay attention to my throat and my fingers. I'm going to put two fingers on my throat, particularly on my Adam's apple. I would like for you to do the same as well. Now I would like for you to repeat after me. Watch, 
turn. Watch, turn. Watch, turn. Watch, turn. Whenever we pronounce the verb watch, there is no vibration on our Adam's apple. This is called a voiceless sound. However, whenever we pronounce the verb turn, there is lots of vibration on my Adam's apple. This is called a voice sound. Now let's try to understand the it sound. We will pronounce it whenever we have verbs that have a T and a D sound. For example, visit has a T sound. So we pronounce the past as visited. Land has D sound. So we pronounce the past as landed. Let me show you more examples of words that are voiceless and voice to help you understand this topic better. Another method to use is following this particular sounds. These sounds are voiceless. P, K, S, H, C, H, G, H, T, H, S, S, C, X. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Helped, looked, washed, watched, laughed, breathed, kissed, danced, fixed. The following consonants have voice sound. L, N, R, G, V, S, W, Y, Z. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Called, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved, used, followed, enjoyed, amazed. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to pronounce all of these verbs. And then record yourself using the website bokaroo.com. After you finish this activity, share the link of the recording on our discussion forums. Hey, what did you get from the video? What did you understand? Tipos de sonido. Mm. De pronunciación. Ajá, uh -huh. specifically. Los, la pronunciación. Ajá, uh -huh. excellent. The ED ending. La pronunciación final de ED. ¿Verdad? Para, eh, y se, son tres diferentes eh, pronunciaciones. Eh, eh, recuerden que para entrar a la meeting, haciendo un paréntesis, tienen que poner su nombre. Porque por, eh, ahí va a aparecer como Galaxy A51 y no vamos a saber quién fue que se conectó a la meeting. Y si de casualidad o por error yo no le puse que estuvo presente, no van a saber si estuvo o no, porque no aparece su nombre, sino que el del dispositivo. Eh, continuando con lo que dijo Moisés, sí, son tres diferentes eh, sonidos de eh, la pronunciación final y the ending, right? So, um, ninguno es Ed. ¿Cuáles son las tres pronunciaciones de los verbos en simple past? Los tres sonidos. Remember? Bien. Bien. Sí. Remembers. Yo ya tengo uno, le digo. Ok, Marcos. No voy a soltar. Eh, 
como, como pronunciar la T al final. Ajá, hay uno que la pronunciación final es como T. T sound. Ajá, the other one. Y de se le agrava D sound. And the other one? ING. -N. No, no es ING. No, no, Juan. no es ING. Ahorita estamos con Perdón. los verbos regulares que son los que terminan en ED. Porque en algunas ocasiones he escuchado que lo pronuncian como ER. Esto no se pronuncia así sino que pues son tres diferentes sonidos y ninguno es ed. Esto es nada más como un refuerzo, ¿verdad? Para eh, lo que es la pronunciación. Es, uh, recuerden sí que ese es el objetivo de estas meetings, ¿verdad? Reforzar eh, áreas de mejora, practicar eh, y solventar dudas. Así es que, bueno, no me voy a tomar mucho con esto. Eh, solo para recordarles que son esto cuando también nos explicaba de los voids, sound y de los um, voiceless. ¿Qué comprendieron de eso? Los voiceless son los que no producen mucha vibración en las cuerdas vocales. Entonces, esos que no producen tanta vibración son los que al final la pronunciación, esto no es nunca, ten, o sea, no tenemos que decir helped, ¿Cómo se dice este? Help. 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 Si pronunciamos help y tocamos acá, help. Help. ¿Verdad? No produce mucha vibración, es bien poquita. Help. Ahora pronuncian call. Call. Vibra más, ¿verdad? Hay mucha vibración. Entonces, los que producen mucha vibración se llaman voiced sounds. Y eso es la pronunciación final es D. Por ejemplo, aquí diríamos called, called, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved, used, followed, enjoyed, amazed. ¿Ok? Y estos, pues sí, que son los voiceless, que no producen mucha vibración, se pronuncia la T al final. Helped, looked, washed. Watched, laughed, breathed, kissed, danced, fixed. ¿Ok? Y estos es id. La pronunciación al final no vamos a decir wanted. Acuérdense, no se pronuncian así, sino que este sonará wanted, needed. Parece id sound at the end. Wanted, needed. Y aquí pues tienen la lista, por ejemplo, regularmente los verbos que terminan en T o D. Want termina en T. Need termina en D. Y son, eh, estos son los voice sounds que utilizan eh, las cuerdas vocales, pero mayormente estos son id sound. Acá tenemos voiceless y terminan en estas consonantes. Eh, la pronunciación final es T. Y en estas los voice la pronunciación final es D, sound. ¿Okay? Luego tenemos un pequeño ejercicio de listening para practicar lo que acabamos de repasar. Eh, como les repito, no me voy a detener mucho ahí, entonces lo voy a ir haciendo un poquito rapidito, pero ustedes me dirán. Este es un listening practice. Eh, esto estaba en la presentación de ayer, que nos quedó pendiente hacerlo y por eso lo estamos haciendo ahora. Tenemos eh, este cartelito y si se pueden, um, pueden fijarse acá están los tres sonidos de los que ya hablamos. ¿Ok? El T sound, D sound, y e the sound. Y tenemos dos verbos, ejemplo de esos sonidos. Vamos a escuchar el audio. Hay uno que no es muy... Um, no es muy fácil de, casi que suena como que está haciendo el mismo verbo en presente, que es el D sound, pero pues vamos a ir al recording. Ok, esto es lo que tienen ahí en la diapositiva. Entonces recuerden, vamos a escuchar primero estos verbos que están acá. 
están divididos en las tres categorías por sonido. Estamos los que terminan en T sound, tenemos dos ejemplos. D sound, dos ejemplos. Y the sound y dos ejemplos. Los vamos a escuchar. Yo le voy a poner el audio una vez solo para que escuchen. Y la siguiente vez va a ser para que escuchen y repitan. Y lo pueden hacer siempre con el micrófono eh, en mute. Solo le voy a ir pausando la segunda vez para darles chancecito de que ustedes puedan repetir. Page 93, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Simple Past ED Endings. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the pronunciation of ED. These verbs end in T. Worked. Watched. These verbs end in D. Cleaned. Stayed. These verbs end in id. Invited. Visited. Okay, now I'm going to play the recording again and you can repeat at home. Page 93, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Simple past ED endings. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the pronunciation of ED. These verbs end in T. Worked. Watched. These verbs end in D. Cleaned. Stayed. These verbs end in id. Invited. Visited. For part B, we have this list of verbs. We have six verbs here. Okay. These six verbs, we are going to listen to them and we are going to classify them by sound. Okay. So I'll give you time for you to draw a chart in your notebook. You can draw the chart and with the T, D, and E. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Finished. Finished, teacher. Okay, now we're going to listen and you're going to write the verb under the correct sound. For example, you will listen cooked and you will write it under the correct sound. Okay, so you will classify them by sound. Okay, ready? And I'm going to play the recording two or three times, so no worries. Okay, here we go. Page 93, exercise four, part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. 
listened. Needed. Shopped. Waited. Page 93, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. Listened. Needed. Shopped. Waited. Page 93, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. Listened. Needed. Shopped. Waited. Which ones do you did you write under the T sound? Here we have the answers. Under T, we have cooked and shop. Under D, we have exercised and listened. Under E sound, you had to write needed and waited. Did you classify them correctly? In my case, yes. Excellent. <laughs> and the rest of you? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Okay, I know this is a um, this topic requires a lot of practice, but yes, we're going to practice now pronunciation. We're going to listen to this conversation, and this is also in the presentation that I sent yesterday. But we're going to uh, listen first and practice. In this conversation, uh, we have some verbs in a simple pass, and you will listen first and focus in the pronunciation of the verbs, such as this one. Here we have another one. This is another. Here we have one more. Here is this one and another. So ahí tienen varios verbos. So, primero voy a poner el audio, solo escuchen, eh, vayan leyendo y veamos, van a ver cómo ahí están las tres eh, diferentes pronunciaciones en estos verbos que van a ver, que tienen la id sound at the end, the id, uh, id ending, perdón, es el, el, el finalizan en ed, son verbos regulares, pero aquí van a escuchar las tres pronunciaciones en práctica. Lo vamos a escuchar nada más la primera vez y luego dos veces más a practicar. And then you will do the same in the breakout rooms. Page 92, Exercise 2, Conversation. I didn't study. Listen and practice. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend. So, I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So, what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? 
I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. Okay, so did you notice here? En la última parte, el verbo washed, sabemos que es T sound at the end, pero se pierde porque la siguiente palabra es con T también, TV. Entonces, si se fijaron en la conversación, no hace I washed TV, sino que lo dicen en solo I washed TV. So, no worries, ahí tienen que unir la expresión. So, we're going to listen and practice. You can repeat after you listen. Page 92, Exercise 2, Conversation. I didn't study. Listen and practice. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend. So, I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. Okay, so let us share here. You have the conversation and here is the next slide before the lesson exercise. And uh, we're going to practice in the breakout rooms. Remember that we're going to focus in the pronunciation of the ED endings. This is just uh, to practice pronunciation and rehearse uh, for you. So let me create the breakup rooms, but before I'm going to allow you to share screens before we have any inconvenience. There you go. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Lo van a compartir o todos lo tenemos. Se puede compartir, ¿verdad? Creo que sí.
Donde están los, las dos personas sería, ¿verdad? Sí, ese es. ¿Quién primero? Si quiere empezamos porque los demás no sé si pueden ahorita. Okay. Sí, sí, sí puedo. Pero empiecen ustedes si gustan. Okay. I am Jason. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I have a busy weekend, so I'm a little tired today. Really? Well, on Saturday, I exercise in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned did laundry and shopped and uh, visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. No, do we have tests today? I did study, uh, I just watched TV or weekend. Okay, ¿Quién, ¿alguien más que siga? Hola. Hola. Ok, yo. Sí, hi, Amy. Did you have a weekend? Well, I have busy weekend, so I am a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercise in the morning. They my room, roommate, and I clearly build laundry and shop, shopping, and they visit my parents. Shopped. Shopped. So, what do you do on Sunday? I study for the test all day. Oh no, do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. Okay. Okay, Moisa, bien, empiezo yo. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? I had a busy weekend. So I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on some Saturday, I exercise in, more, in the morning. Then my roommate and I finish eat laundry and shop. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no, do we have a test today? I didn't study, I just watch TV all weekend. Okay. Hi, Amy, do, do you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, so I am a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I ex exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visit my parents. What did you do on the Sunday? I studied 
for the test. Oh no, do we have this today? I didn't study, I just... Muchacho. Ah, no, perdón, <laughs> muchacho. Eh. Perdón, don compañero. Está bien, está bien. Ok, let's practice. ¿Con quién? Si quiere con Rafa. Hola. Hi, Ami. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a good weekend, so I really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I was in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned the laundry and shopped and no. the shopped. Uh -huh. shopped. 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 And the visitor, my father. No. I visited. I visited. I visited. No, Eve, Juan Ricardo. Okay, continue. So, what do you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no, do we have a test today? I didn't study, I just watched TV all weekend. You can change roles now. Okay. Rafa, start. Iris, si quiere continuamos nosotros. Vaya, niña Margarita. Quiere inicio yo y me sigue. Por él este primero. Lo vamos a practicar con Iris. Vaya, dele, está bueno. Si quiere ah, inicio. <risa> ok. Sí, ella. Hi, Hi, Margarita, le voy a ayudar. Ok. Empezamos. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Did, did you, you have, have a good... Uh -huh. Did you have a good weekend? Did you, did you have a good weekend? weekend? Muy bien, Margarita. Hagámoslo otra vez. Did you have a good weekend? Did you have a weekend? A good weekend? A good weekend. Uh -huh. Well, I had a busy weekend, so I am a little tired today. Really? Why? Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning with my roommate and clean the laundry and shop and the beach and the, I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? So what did you do on, on Sunday? Sunday? We started for the test all day. Oh no, do we have a test today? Today. Today. I did study use watching TV I wiki. Ok, Margarita, la última parte. I didn't study. I didn't study. I just I watched TV all weekend. I just watched TV all weekend. All weekend. All weekend. Ajá, uh -huh. muy bien. Continue. Yo con usted, teacher. Repito, repito, repito. Ay, perdón.
¿Usted empieza o empiezo yo, Juan? Eh, no, a repetir igual así como hizo con Margarita para pronunciar. Ah, muy bien. Quiere que... Ok, repita mm. entonces, Juan. Pero primero escuche, no repita a la par, porque pues, entonces no, no es, eh, se completa el ejercicio. Hi, mm -hmm. Amy. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Muy bien, solo que el have es sin e. Did you have a good weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend. Well, I had a week weekend. Busy weekend. Busy weekend. Muy bien, otra vez. Well, I had a busy weekend. With a white, a light, a busy weekend. Mm, otra vez. Well. Someone is to wait. Uh, uh, well, otra vez. Well. 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 I had. I had. A busy. A busy. Weekend. Weekend. So. So. I'm a little. I'm a little. Tired today. Tired today. Really? Really? Why? Why? Well. Well, on Saturday, on Saturday, I exercised. I exercised in the morning. In the morning. Then, then my roommate, my roommate, and I, and I cleaned, clean, did laundry, did laundry, and shopped, and shopped. And then I visited. And they uh, visited. My parents. My parents. So. So. What did you do? What did you do? On Sunday. On Sunday. I studied. I studied. For the test. For the day. All day. All day. Oh, no. Oh no. Do we have the what? Do we have the we have do, do, do we do, do we have a test today? A test today. I didn't I didn't study. Study. I just watched I just watched TV. TV. All weekend. All weekend. Okay. All weekend. Mm -hmm. Continue practicing. Anybody else from the group? Yes. Okay. Tell me, Margarita. Ahí está. Tengo la niña Margarita. Sayemos, dice la teacher. Ya sé, ya sé. Ok. Vaya, espérenme. Ahí la paz.
Okay, volunteers to role play. Teacher. Yes, Andrea. Can you remember the pronunciation of visited? Visited. Es con id. Visited. Visited. Uh -huh. Visited. And studied? Studied. Studied. Mm -hmm. Visited. Visited. Mm -hmm. And studied. Studied. Okay, thank you. Volunteers? Okay, we have two. Okay, first Mercedes and Carmen, and then Moises and Maricela. Okay, let's start with the first pair. Comienzo, Carmencita. Okay. okay. Hi, Emmy. Do you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend. So I'm a little bit tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry and shopped, and then I visit my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I stood for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I use watch TV or weekend. Okay, very good. I just heard one word mispronounced, que fue este, el compre, shopped. Shopped. Uh-huh, excellent, shopped. Very good, thank you so much for your participation. Let's continue with the second sure. couple. Okay. Hi, Emmy. Did you had a good weekend? Well, I had a good weekend. I'm so a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercise in the morning. Then my roommate and my clients did laundry and shop. And then I visited my parents. So, what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no, do we had a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV or weekend. Okay, you did it very, very good. Solo escuché un Ed que se escapó por ahí, que fue en el de Clint. Clint. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yes, very good job. Excellent. Thank you so much for practicing. Then I have Juan Ricardo uh, Alvaren, Alvarado creo que, and Judy Araceli. Juan Ricardo Alvarado and Judy Araceli. Okay. Alvarenga, teacher. <laughs> Ay, perdón, es que no alcanzaba a ver todas las letras grandes. <laughs> perdón. No no Alvarado se llama. <clears throat> okay. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, so I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no. Do we have a test today? <clears throat> I didn't study. I just watch TV all week. Okay. God bless you. <laughs> Excellent job. Very, very good. Nice. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so you. much for practicing. So, um, I see that you did a very good job. Hicieron un muy buen trabajo con eh, este ejercicio. El objetivo, pues, se logró. Solo hay que seguir practicando, ¿verdad? Porque de repente se nos escapa alguno que otro. Pero recuerden, pues, ahí tienen el... Pueden ver el audio para que vuelvan a ver... Eh, a escuchar el audio de la conversación. Ahí va a estar el video en la plataforma mañana tempranito. Eh, 
vamos a continuar entonces con el programa. Ok, let me share again. Ok, now we have this topic. This is part of what we were doing yesterday. Es parte de lo que estuvimos haciendo ayer. Um, en este ejercicio, it's identifying training opportunities for, for personal. Label the description of the process with the right heading. So we have the headings here. So we have analyze the job, identify personal current skill and knowledge, identify training solutions, evaluate performance after training, and decide the skill and knowledge gaps. So you would decide which one is for number one, two, three, four, and five. So you just have to put the, the headings in order, depending of the description or the process that we have here. For example, if number one, it says list all opportunities and areas of improvements where training is necessary to increase effectiveness and decide if there is a gap between the knowledge and the skills of the staff, ask employees what areas they need help with. So what is the um, the most appropriate head heading there? Identify personal training, training skills, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think it is, uh, yes. Identify personal current skills and knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think that's the proper heading for number one. You want to do the same with the rest of them. I'll give you time for you to uh, write them in your notebook in the correct order.
Have you finished? Okay, what do you think of number one? What do you have? Identify personal current skills and knowledge. That is for number one or the two? It's for number one. Okay, that's correct. Thank you so much. And somebody else for number two? Uh, identify training solution. Yes. Uh huh. Identify training solutions. That sounds good. Number three. Evaluate per fly heart training. Three. Number three. Evaluate performance after training. Yes, evaluate it. Yes, that is correct. Thank you so much. Number four. Analyze the job. Yes, analyze the job. And finally, number five. Decide the skills and knowledge, knowledge gasp. That is correct. Thank you so much for your participation. Now for the next yes. exercise, it is... um. Uh, for you to use the process in the previous page to determine your skill and knowledge at work. Decide if you need to go to a training or what training solutions would you prefer? Number one, analyze the job. What activities do I need to perform in my job? What, what is specifically do you do? What are your duties? Number two, identify my current skills and knowledge. Number three, decide skills and knowledge gaps. 
And uh, number four, identify training solutions. What type of training programs will be helpful to develop the skills or lack of skills? Uh, uh, what are some training solutions? Do you do not conflict with my work schedule or on my personal life? Online programs, for example, on the job training or mentoring. I'll give you for you some time. You can write your ideas in your notebook, and then we're going to share what you have. This is about you and your job, your activities what needs to be improved, and what you think is the best way for you to fill those gaps.
Ready? Have you finished or you need more time? Finish, teacher. Okay, would you like to share what you have? Okay, number one, analyze the job. I check the inventory, order the products, and customer attendance. And number two, know all the Brief, no estoy segura de esa palabra. Brief case, como portafolio. Uh -huh. Brief case. Brief case of products. I'm skilling this. And number three, I need help with customer's attendance. And number four, customer attendance and training during working hours. Training during working hours. Yes, it sounds good. Thank you so much for your participation. Is there anybody else who would like to share? Is anybody else? Or we continue then. Carmen, thank you. Okay, teacher. Uh, number one, analyze the job. What activities do I need to perform in my job? Is it make a process descriptor, evaluate a gold or gold, no sé cómo se escribe, gold, se pronuncia. gold. H, ¿cómo es? H, 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 se lo escribo, teacher, no sé. Goes to es. achieve. Ajá. Okay, goes to achieve. Goes to achieve. Uh, number two, identify my current skill. Uh, the specific skill do I need to perform in my job? You say I need to be agile, agile with numbers. Know how to interpret financial report, have negotiation capacity, we have empathy. And number three, 
are Daniel skill. I lack and that could help me do my job better. Speak English. <laughs> Speak English. <laughs> yes. yes. In number four, uh, advanced Excel course. Finish my training English. Y, y lo que no me, no me genera conflicto es my online English class. Ah, okay. That's nice. Thank you so much. Excellent participation, Lene. Anybody else? Okay, so we're going to continue want, with the next one. What activities I need I perform in one uh, my young. I work I gave cemetery a wedding hand hundred weddings in various tradies. Why is and if for my job I scarred I perform my job. I have a quilling, a dive work, I like HVD, high activity types, I basic work. Any other skill like a co RB beer work better? Uh, what is the work? No problem. What is for way program was seen? The low and we likewise try any solution and complete white for Chelbu and my person or like a problem. I try being monitored. Erwin, I work in, I work in seminaries, capacity, capacity, capa, como se dice, capacitation teacher? Capacit Training? Training ever. Uh huh. I see training to bring to die. Finish. Okay, thank you so much, Juan. And uh, after that exercise, to continue with the section number four, we have uh, this conversation. Uh, it's quite simple, so I don't think there is need to practice here in the main section. But I would like for you to scan the, the, uh, the conversation and tell me if you find new vocabulary there. Teacher, what is the meaning of grooming? Grooming. Yes. Uh, grooming uh, es como el aseo. Tiene que ver con el aseo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On a lay. También lo usan bastante con los animalitos, ¿verdad? El grooming, porque eso tiene, la palabra es aseo, la definición es aseo, y como práctica o como noun sería el, el asear a un animal, eh, eh, cepillarlo, cortarle el cabello, etcétera, el aseo en general. A eso se refiere el grooming. Any other question? Okay, as there are no more questions, we are going to go ahead with the breakout rooms and practice this conversation. So let me uh, stop sharing and create the breakout rooms. Ayer me fue yo, teacher. Creo que no tengo problem. ¿Qué le falló el internet?
Teacher. Ay, perdón, teacher. Teacher. Payments. 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 Right, so now do you practice this conversation? Do we have volunteers to our place? You can raise your hand. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga and Mercedes. Thank you so much. We will use this chart to analyze the training needs of our new servers. It says major tasks of the position as servers are in charge of handling food correctly and processing payments correctly. Don't forget, servers have to be friendly. I think we need to help them with that. Grooming and personal appearance, they look a bit messy. Okay, let's have a short training next Saturday in the morning. I will organize everything and you see, send them an email to let them know. Okay, you did an excellent job with pronunciation. You were amazing. Uh, anybody else would Thank like you. to role play? We have uh, Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Somebody to practice with him? Yes. Con quien? Francisco Nemias. Thank you. Empiece, Juan. We will how this child, a dog analysis, die training needs, a hard no server. It takes major tasks of the position as servers are charging and handling food correctly and processing payment correctly. Down for server hybrid or freighting. I train, I need help tied with what's roaming and person are pricing. They looks a bike mixing. Okay, let's have short training next Saturday in the morning. I will organize everything and you send them email to let them know. Finish. Okay, very good job, Francisco. It's better yet. Um, uh, Juan Ricardo, thank you so much. Let's listen to Judy and Moises. Okay, we will use this chart to analyze the training needs of our new servers. It's a major phase of the position. A service are the shape, chair, chair of handling for correctly and processing payment correctly. Don't forget, servers have to preemptively. I think we need to help them with that, with that grooming, grooming and personal appearance. They look a bit messy. Okay, let's have a short training next Saturday in the morning. I will organize everything and you send them an email to let them know. Okay, very good. Remember, it's not pronounced organized. You did a very good. Thank you so much for practicing. So now, before we can continue, let me check attendance again. So let's get Teacher, uh, ah. did you check attendance at the beginning? Yes, I did. I, I didn't hear you, <laughs> but I was here. Uh, I was. 15 minutes late. Ah, okay, thank you, Imelda. Let's see. Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you, Andrea. Belen Batres. Carlos Mario. 
Carmen René. Present teacher. Thank you. Delmi Guadalupe. Francisco Nehemias. Present. Thank you. Helen Dionelli. Present teacher. Thank you, Helen. Iris Joana. Present. Thank you, Iris. Uh, Jose Arnoldo. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Present teacher. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz. Maricela del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you. Vamos a ponerle aquí. Moises Alberto. I am here teacher. Thank you. Noemi Albertina. No se puedo conectar ahora, Noemi. Okay. Rafael Antonio. Present. Thank you. Reina Margarita. Present. Thank you, Reina. Rubén de Jesús. Present teacher. Judy Araceli. Present teacher. Thank you, Judy. José Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present teacher. Thank you. María Angélica. Imelda Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. And Susana. Okay, let's continue with the program here. So, okay, we already practiced the conversation. As you see, we have a couple of expressions in bold. It means we'll use and we'll organize. Uh, we will be discussing the uses of um, the tenses or the auxiliaries that we use in order to express future. How many? Uh, ways are there to express future. Do you remember? I remember the auxiliary will and uh, going to. Okay. Yes, there are, uh, we have two there. Okay. Using the auxiliary will plus the verb in infinitive. And the other one is using be going to. And the third one, Hay una tercera. Progressive. Mm -hmm. Present progressive. También se puede usar el present progressive o también conocido como present continuous para expresar futuro. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿Cuándo puedo usar will? ¿Cuándo puedo usar going to? ¿Y cuándo puedo usar present continuous o present progressive para expresar futuro? Puede ser por un saludo. Teacher, in, ¿en español? Sí, Usa. you can say it in Spanish. Ok. Eh, will, cuando, creo, ¿verdad? Cuando no estamos seguros de que lo que vamos, lo que, cuando no estamos seguros de lo que estamos diciendo, va a pasar. Y going es cuando estamos seguros de que algo va a pasar. O sea, de que lo que estamos diciendo sí va a pasar. Y progressive. Este, creo que es cuando estamos en el mismo momentito, pero lo que va a pasar va a ser en ese justo momento, por así decirlo. No sé si me, me explico. Ajá, sí, yes, bastante, eh, bastante acertadas las ideas. Muy bien, gracias por su participación. Están bastante acertadas. ¿Alguien más quiere agregar algo? Cuando vamos a hacer una pregunta, siempre se, se utiliza we house o we organic. O cuando también se hace una sugerencia, se puede utilizar también. Para preguntas, sí, o sea, de los tres, en los tres formas de expresar futuro, se puede hacer afirmativo, negativo o en pregunta. Moisés. 
recuerdo que el we es para planes, para hacer planes y el going to es lo que ajá, lo que vamos a hacer, lo que, a dónde vamos a ir, algo así recuerdo. Ajá. Yo recuerdo, yo recuerdo que we es para un futuro lejano y el ing es para un futuro cercano. Ahí vamos recolectando ideas. Muy bien. ¿Qué más recuerdan? Que el verbo después de que se usa will va en su forma base. Exacto. Sin conjugarlo, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, si es ser o estar, decimos be. Como que yo diga, yo voy a estar ahí mañana. I will be there tomorrow. No lo conjugamos en am, is, are, sino que se deja tal cual. Eh, sea primera, segunda, tercera persona, no importa, el verbo no se altera, se deja en su forma infinitiva, muy bien. Eh, bastante tienen ideas, recuerdos de, de, de cada cosa. Ahora, el will y el going to, alguien hablaba al principio de cuando estamos seguros de que algo va a pasar o cuando no estamos seguros. Ok, bien. Si bien decimos que el futuro no se puede predecir o, o etcétera, pero eh, el will lo utilizamos en caso de que yo tome una decisión ahorita en el momento sin planearlo. El teléfono suena o, o alguien toca la puerta, es algo que no está planeado. Entonces digo I will open, es una decisión espontánea en el momento. En el pre, en y creo presente. que por ahí, no estamos hablando del futuro, Juan. No, pues sí, este, pues, digamos, yo me estoy organizando ahorita, pues, y es como mañana es, es presente. Digo. Mañana no. no es presente. Compañero, no, pues, no, compañero, no, no, si me... gusta, escuchemos la explicación de la teacher y luego preguntamos, porque yo si creo no, que no vamos mejor. a entender. Uh -huh. Entonces, volviendo al punto, el will lo usamos para decisiones espontáneas. Algo del momento, algo que decimos ahorita, uh, voy a abrir la puerta, I will open. Te voy a ayudar, vemos que alguien va con bolsas cargado, te ayudaré, I will help you, ¿ok? Decisiones espontáneas. Eh, alguien hablaba de que si tenemos cierta certeza o no estamos seguros, ¿ok? El presente, eh, el futuro se puede hacer con will cuando no tenemos evidencias de que vaya a suceder. Pero cuando tenemos alguna evidencia, usamos going to. Por ahí andaba la idea de la compañera. ¿Cómo así? Podemos decir, si yo veo, yo le puedo decir a alguien, ah, no te preocupes, vas a pasar el examen. Pero no estoy segura, solo le digo como para tranquilizarlo. Ah, you will pass the exam. Ah, you will pass. Ajá, tranquilo, you will pass. No sé si lo va a pasar, pero para que se tranquilice. Pero si de repente yo tengo una evidencia, yo lo he visto estudiar, lo he visto sacrificarse, entonces uso going to, porque estoy casi segura que lo va a pasar. Entonces yo le digo, you are going to pass the exam. Uh -huh. Esa es la diferencia del will y el going to. El will puede usar predicciones cuando no tengo ninguna evidencia. No sé si sí o no, ¿verdad? Uso will. Pero si tengo alguna pista, alguna evidencia de que la predicción se va a realizar, entonces uso going to. Por ejemplo, si de repente veo que el, ah, el cielo, está, o sea, si Moisés Urbina lo digo, digo will, it will rain. ¿verdad? No le crean, pero si vemos que el cielo Me está negro, mucho. que ahí viene el viento, que se oye. Entonces toda esa evidencia me dice va a llover, muy probablemente. Entonces digo it's going to rain porque hay bastante evidencia de que sí va a llover. Entonces uso going to para predicciones de las cuales yo no tengo pruebas ni evidencias ni seguridad, uso will. Pero si hay evidencia y yo estoy segura que va a suceder, uso going to. Esa es la diferencia del will y el going to. Ahora, el present progressive. El presente progresivo se usa más que todo para eh, actividades que están en progreso. Y por ahí lo mencionó alguien, sí. Ahorita podríamos decir, yo estoy hablando. I am speaking. You are listening. You are paying attention. Pero también el, se usa para un futuro cercano. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Para saber si estoy hablando de algo que está sucediendo en el momento. Eh, no uso the time expression. 
pero si es para un futuro cercano, tengo que usar una expresión de tiempo. Por ejemplo, si yo les digo ahorita, I'm, I'm having dinner. I'm having dinner. Es como, este, entonces, está comiendo, pero yo no la veo comiendo. Pero si yo le digo, voy a estar cenando afuera mañana, tengo una invitación, entonces tengo que usar la expresión tomorrow. I'm having dinner tomorrow. Ok. Um, I'm having a test. O podríamos decir, estamos finalizando el, el curso, pero no finaliza ahora, finaliza la próxima semana. Entonces diríamos, we are finishing the model next week. Cuando sea presente continuo para expresar futuro, tienen que agregarle la expresión de tiempo y solo se usa en futuro cercano para algo que va a suceder más noche, este mismo día o mañana, la próxima semana y a lo mucho el próximo mes. Eh, vi una manita levantada, pero no identifique. ¿Preguntas? Eh, por ejemplo, eh, see you later tomorrow. Es progresivo. I'm see seeing you. you uh, podría ser I'm seeing you tomorrow. Acuérdense que el progresivo lleva el verbo con ing. Se compone del verbo to be, am, is, are, más el verbo principal con ing. Y luego le vamos a agregar una expresión de tiempo. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, me reuniré contigo mañana. I'm meeting you. I am meeting you tomorrow. Ok, me reúno contigo mañana. Uh -huh. I'm meeting you tomorrow. Imelda. Eh, sí, a mí siempre me ha generado confusión eso como saber el, el presente progressive. Cuando está en, en el momento y cuando es en futuro. Entonces, para diferenciarlo, tiene que ir acompañado de un... Eh, un, un, ¿Cómo sería? Expresión de tiempo. Ajá, expresión de tiempo. Ajá, para, para diferenciar que está en futuro. Sí. Ok. Idealmente gracias. así es, porque si no dejamos al, al, a la persona perdida, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. No se sabe si es ahorita. Por ejemplo, si yo le digo, I'm meeting you. Uh -huh. Ok, ahorita, o, pero si yo le digo, I'm meeting you tomorrow. Te, Ajá, sí, ahí se estaré... entiende que es futuro. Ajá, para mañana en la noche. Me estaré reuniendo contigo mañana. I'm meeting you tomorrow night. Ok, gracias. Muy bien, ¿alguna otra pregunta? Más o menos quedó claro o si ya es como que se volvió a acomodar lo que ya traían de conocimiento. Tenemos unos sí, ejercicios, sí. ok, muy bien, tenemos unos ejercicios, pero ya por cuestión de tiempo no los vamos a hacer. Ahora lo vamos a hacer mañana. Están los enlaces ahí, pero mañana les voy a incluir lo que les acabo de explicar ahorita para que ya les quede eh, en la presentación en el PowerPoint. Así es que les voy a agregar la explicación que les acabo de dar ahorita. Eh, cuando usamos will, cuando going to y cuánto present progressive para expresar futuro. Ok, así es que pues los dejo ir a descansar en... And meeting you tomorrow. Thank you. Good Thank night. you, teacher. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. See you Bye. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Yo lo bendiga a todos y a todas. Ella no puede. Yo di, voy a sacar a José Arnoldo, que creo que hoy solo estuvo como oyente. Ok, teacher. <ríe> no lo oí participar. Sí. Perdón, estaba en el trabajo. Ok. <ríe> ok, see okay. you tomorrow. Good night. <ríe> And how are you doing, Judy? ¿Cómo se ha sentido? ¿Cómo van las clases? I'm fine, teacher. Well, we're in class. Thank you. ¿Qué, um, ¿qué siente que solo, necesita más ayuda? O, dígame, perdón. Creo, sorry, creo que los temas que más me han costado durante este módulo han sido como la del tema del if. Ah, el if, 
Sí, sentí que les costó un poquito, por eso estuve tres secciones con eso. Sí, ese tema creo que creo que la mayoría nos, nos confundió, porque en otro módulo anterior habíamos visto el if cuando unía dos oraciones, que una sin la otra no tenía sentido. Sí, eh, recuerdo que sí les expliqué eso, que la dependiente es la que no tiene sentido sin la otra. Ajá, ajá. Uh -huh. Pero de ahí parece que el último tema sí me, me costó bastante. Yo creo que más que todo repasar. Sí, es eso. Y como ese es una, son varios tipos de condicionales, ese es uno. Tal vez por ahí sea que se les ha eh, eh, cruzado con algo que han visto anteriormente. Porque sí sé que de estos temas ya habían visto algunos. No sé qué ejercitaron o no, porque esto de la pronunciación del pasado me dijeron que ya lo habían visto. Pero sin embargo, sí, sí, como que siempre se necesita un poquito más de práctica. Entonces, por eso lo, lo retomé. Pero sí, de hecho, ya faltan poquitas páginas del, del, del material de Insafor para terminar. Entonces, sí, podría eh, incluirles otra vez el tema. Tal vez con un material más, eh, no tanto de este, sino que algo más sencillo, como más práctico para ustedes. Tal vez siguiendo la estructura, ya, ya voy a buscar qué les hago para que repasen ese tema. Ok, teacher, thank you. Algo, otra thank cosa you. que quisiera, o algún ejercicio que sienta que le funciona o que quiera que hagamos más. Mm. O un tema en específico. Sí. No, este sería más que todo el tema de los condicionales que más me ha costado. De ahí lo demás es como un repaso de todos los módulos, ¿verdad? Porque el present simple y todo lo demás lo hemos visto, solo que lo vamos llevando ahí de la mano. ¿verdad? Sí, como que se y tiende este, a, a ir en la olvidando. plataforma, teacher, en la plataforma. ¿Mm? Sí, correcto. En la plataforma este, hay... Hay unos ejercicios que, aunque los pusimos de la forma que, us que los hicimos en clases, no me salen, probablemente sea problema. Eh, sí, quizás sería de que mande las fotos de los que no le está agarrando y los resolvamos tal vez mañana en clase para mandarle tal vez de que copie y pegue o, o vemos qué se hace, porque si no habría que reportar darlo con soporte para que no le vaya a afectar en su nota final. Sí, porque hay unos en la parte, en, al principio que así este, todos los teníamos igual y nada, no, no me da, siempre me da error. Mm, sí, habría que revisarlos. Entonces, si gusta, los revisamos mañana en la clase o, o trate de hacerlos nuevamente. Y mande las fotos de cuáles le están fallando y ponga ahí qué número de ejercicio es para poderlo encontrar más rápido. Ok, teacher, thank you. Eso, Eso es todo. Más, sería todo. Eso es todo, teacher. Thank okay. you. Bueno, gracias muchas gracias por su tiempo también, por quedarse. La dejo que descanse entonces. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. See you good tomorrow. Night. Bye.